This is part of a problem-solving lecture series in investments. Today, we will have a look at problem 12 in chapter 2 from the 10th edition of our textbook. Here's a view of this problem. We are ba basically given the same data as in the previous problem number 11. And we would like to calculate this time uh, the first period rates of return on the following indexes. In part A, we are using a market value weighted index and in part B, an equally weighted index. When we say the first period rates of return, what we really mean is as we move from period 0 to period 1, basically. So let's start with the first part. As you recall, market value weighted index can simply be found by multiplying prices with quantities. Well, in the first case, um, the price is $90 for stock A and we're trading 100 uh, units. So at time T is equal to zero, let's make the calculation for our index here. It's simply $90 times 100 uh, shares for a total of $9,000 plus. In the second occasion, we have $50 shares, 200 of them for a total of $10,000 plus $100 shares for a total of 200 shares, an additional $20,000. When you sum all these numbers, you would get the value of your index at $39,000. Now at time one, Let's see what happens to the value of our index again. So we have this time $95 shares, 100 of them for a total of $9,500 plus. We have 200 shares each priced at $45 for a total of $9,000. And finally, uh, 200 shares priced at $110 each for a total of $22,000. This sum would now be 31,000 plus 9,500, 40,500. Now we can go ahead and see the increase in the, in the value of this index, which would basically give us the rate of return for that index uh, that we are basically seeking in this question, which is simply equal to uh, the... Um, the new value divided by the old value minus one if you will so therefore it would be 40,500 divided by $39,000 minus one for a net rate of return of 3.85% as our net return on uh, on this index. Now in part B we would like to this time use an equally weighted index. All we do is we calculate the return for each stock separately. So the return or the rate of return for stock A is simply equal to the uh, the share of the price change which is 95 it used to be $90 now it improved to $95 so therefore the appreciation in the value of the stock is 95 divided by 90 minus 1 because 95 divided by 90 would give you a gross return minus 1 will give us the net return of 5.56% in a similar way one can find the uh, rate of return for stock B simply as the ratio 45 to 50 minus 1. In this case, we realize the stock is depreciating in value and the rate of return is therefore negative 10%. And finally, the same thing for rate of return for stock C. This one is appreciating in value and you can easily see the appreciation is positive 10% now. Therefore, the index or the rate of return for an equally weighted uh, index is equal to the average of the returns for individual separate, um, sep separate securities. So the average of these three would be 556% plus 
minus 10% plus an additional 10% all divided by 3 because it's equally weighted the outcome would be 1.85% is our answer for the rate of return of an equally weighted index. So that's the end of our short lecture. See you in our next video.